What's up everybody? I'm the Flanneled Fish and today we are taking a look at the pros, the cons, and the install for the Hydra 52 HD. Alright, so let's talk about the install first. You see, with the Aqua Illuminations, Hydra 52s, and other Aqua Illumination uh, light products, they're designed to be hung on their proprietary hanging system. Now, it's flexible enough that you can hang it in various ways without it, uh, but it's definitely easiest to hang it with it, um, being it their rail system, the HMS, um, or hanging kits designed to hang it from the ceiling or some kind of cross member. Um, so there's different ways you can install them, but there was no good way to install them when you have the canopy. This is a common issue that I've seen with almost all lighting solutions is, for the most part, saltwater aquarium lighting that's capable of keeping corals alive lack in the aspect that there is no good way to mount them to the inside of the canopy. Now that's not for lost cause though. They do that to make sure that people are not putting them in a space where they can overheat, burn up, or potentially catch fire to your canopy. So these are things that I had to take in consideration when deciding how I was going to mount them up. If we look up top, uh, I've actually used one of their HMS brackets that's designed on a slider rail, but I got just the brackets. Now, I'll probably change this in the future. I have a couple of ideas of what I want to do um, that will make it easier, but as of right now, the lights are on that bracket. They're a pain to get up. Uh, I was going to make a video of the install on the lights and the pump. I started, and when my camera died because I had recorded for so long trying to get the lights in, I decided that there was just no good way of actually showing you how I installed them because there's not an angle for me to get to. I was working in very low space with a tiny Allen key and it just wasn't good. All that said, I ended up getting them in, they're mounted, and it's exactly what I expected. So, if we take a look at the tank, and the camera probably doesn't show this, but the left side of the tank is covered with the new light and the right side is covered with my old light. The old light is the older generation, it is not the HD version or the hyperdrive version, um, it's just the standard. And so, that will be upgraded in the future, but money's kind of an issue. So, uh, this side, with the new Hydra 52 HDs, one of the things that changed between the old Hydra and the new Hydra is that the Spectrum is more of a blue tint now, rather than the kind of purplish tint that you get on the, uh, from the old ones. Now, like I said, I can see this because I'm here, but in a general, the camera doesn't really pick it up, and most people don't see it. Um, the people that have viewed my tank since I put the lights on haven't noticed anything until I said something. But, so, yeah, that's a little bit of a nu nuisance thing. Um, that kind of brings me into the cons of these lights. The cons, we've already talked about, too. Limited m mounting options for inside canopies. Uh, they have a plethora of options for if you have a uh, tank without a canopy, but with a canopy it can be a little bit different. Two, it bothers me that the new uh, light has got an on-deck uh, on Wi-Fi and you have to use the director or the controller for the old light. Now, it having Wi-Fi isn't what bothers me. What bothers me about it is the fact that these two can't interface with each other anymore. I have to have two separate programs, or I have to log into one light, fix it, and then log into my director to adjust the other one. And trying to balance them back and forth is quite difficult. So shortening, lengthening, changing the spectrum, or any of that is a hassle. Maybe they can correct this in the future and allow the new edition interact with the director so I can keep them together and be able to control both lights simultaneously through the director. That would be my optimal solution because then I'm not having to get anything new. If I knew about this before, I would have potentially changed my selection as far as what light to, to, that I would have got. Um, I have it now and I like it. The last thing that it's not a con about the light itself, it's about my particular light. When the fan comes on, it has a it, the fan is actually contacting the lead wire that actually powers the fan, and it makes this ridiculous. It sounds like a helicopter. Uh, it's something that I can fix. So again, it's a little thing, but that's something that should have been right when it came from the manufacturer. Why I haven't gotten it replaced or anything is just for the fact that it is an easy thing to fix. Um, they actually sell replacement fans for these things if they ever go out on Aqua Illuminations website. I think they're like 18 bucks, and so I've had to do it before. I know exactly how to take that fan out, put it back in, and fix this problem. 
uh, small thing, but again, on a brand new light, something that I wouldn't expect. So, those are the bad things. Bringing us into the good, uh, what I do like about them, one, they're very powerful, easy to set up, and they have very good light spread. I only have these lights about seven inches off my water. I don't have shadowing in the center of the tank like I had before with the old lights, and the color blending is very good. You get a nice shimmer. It's not overwhelming, in my opinion, um, and you don't see these random little streaks of uh, color from the greens or red LEDs that you see with some other options that that kind of prism effect always really bothered me and that's a kind of a pet peeve and that's mostly why I actually questioned if I wanted to go LEDs on this tank. I have, so I'm going to stick with it. Other than that, they are very low heat, as most LEDs are, so I don't have to worry about my canopy overheating. And with that said, with the heat in consideration, the way I mounted them, I actually have about a uh, half an inch to an inch gap above the light for heat to disperse without it heating up the wood on my physical canopy. Other than that, the lights overall are very, very well built. Um, I would say near indestructible, plus they have upgradability. They, that's one thing about Aqua Illuminations that has done a great job, is from one version to the next, they have almost always provided an upgrade, upgrade kit that would be the price of buying the components for the light to put in your old casing. So they do a really good job with that. I'm hoping that they might come out with a hyperdrive upgrade for the old unit. That way I can upgrade that one and then these guys would be connected. So all things that are uh, looking forward to and hoping for in the future. Final thoughts. Final thoughts on all of these lights. Well, I think they do a really good job. The corals that I have in here have responded incredibly well. I get good coloration throughout the day and then at night when I have the UV and those royal and dark blues on, the, the fluorescence off them are just incredible. They pop and I absolutely love that. That's actually what brought me to LEDs in the first place is because of that fluorescent uh, capabilities that it brings out of corals. And you can change the spectrum to bring out different colors and that power and flexibility is one of the big reasons why I went with these lights. Wish they were easier to install, can't do anything about it at this moment, and it probably had it away. There probably is a better way, so if any of you guys know, let me down in the comments. Uh, I would love to hear how you guys mounted them inside a canopy, or uh, if you've seen anybody mount them in a canopy, or even tag another video if you've seen someone else mount them in a canopy in a way that's good. With all that said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. This is the Flannel Fish signing out. Hope you guys have a good one. Like this video, comment down below, and I will see you guys next time. We're talking.